America is fighting for its soul. Your sin is the reason you're going to hell. Hey, what's up? The Obama era has alienated and angered a growing number of evangelical Christians. I didn't choose this fight. This fight has come to us. And you know what I say? Bring it on! I've spent nearly six months following two of the country's most radical Christian hate groups. A pastor banned from entering the UK. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! And a network who take their extreme and shocking views onto the streets. You might have a Muslim walking around here today that may bomb for Allah and take you out. They're preaching intolerance and homophobia more and more aggressively. It's disgusting. There's no reason for them to be like that. And they're gaining new followers as American politics becomes increasingly polarized. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Get back, Muslim. Here's some bacon for you, swine. Pastor Anderson, here I am. Are any of you guys homos or just sympathizers? Welcome to the world of Christian hate preaching. No one will ever shut me down. The only way to shut me down is to kill me. And even if they kill me, I'll just be that much more popular. Last November, Paris was hit by a wave of terror attacks. 90 people were murdered at an Eagles of Death Metal concert. Around the world, there was an outpouring of grief. But one striking voice spoke out with the opposite message. You know, there's something about when you go to a concert of death metal, somebody might get killed! You know, you're worshiping death. And then all of a sudden, people start dying. Oh, wait a minute, what, what's going on? Well, you love death so much yeah. that you bought the ticket. Yeah. You love worshiping Satan. Well, let's have some of Satan's religion come in and shoot you. I mean, that's what these people should think about before they go to such a wicked concert. Pastor Stephen Anderson's sermon, The Sinful Nation of France, was widely condemned, but it still got nearly a quarter of a million hits on YouTube. He's become one of America's most notorious hate preachers and has been banned from entering other countries, including the UK. I traveled to the US to find out why his extreme brand of Christianity is spreading and what impact this is having. As our country becomes more degenerate, and as our country goes down the drain morally, then people are more willing to listen to someone like me. Because about five or 10 years ago, a lot of the stuff that I preached, people thought it was too radical. But now they're starting to see, oh wow, he's right. I think what makes our church special is just how the preaching is totally unfiltered, uncensored, just raw Bible preaching. And that's what people are looking for. Around 300 people attend Stevens Church in Arizona, triple the size of an average American congregation. Now let me ask you something. Is our government for homosexuality or against homosexuality? There's no question about it. I mean, in the month of June, our government celebrates for an entire month a month of sodomy. June is LGBT month. Now, to me, LGBT stands for let God burn them. Right. Okay. But to them, it means, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. <clears throat> but you say, well, it's LGBTQ. Well, then you could say let God burn them quickly. Yeah. Or let, <laughs> let God burn them queers or whatever. There is a difference between these people and the rest of the population. I couldn't believe what I'd just heard. Many Americans, including the majority of Christians, are also appalled by the extremity of Stephen's views. But the constitutional right to free speech means that Stephen can preach homophobic sermons 
without fear of being arrested. To normal people, homosexuality or pedophilia, they're disgusting. So, to, to a normal person. Why do you put pedophilia and homosexuality in the same group? They are in the same group. Because it, it, any, any man who would have sex with another man would have sex with anything. Period. Like any, I'll, 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 I'll put it this way. Any man who would have sex with another man would have sex with an animal. But that's blatantly not true. That is true. That's reality. Even if you don't think it's reality, because you've seen it on TV portrayed different, or you've known people in your personal life that pulled the wool over your eyes about what their lifestyle is like, what do you think homosexuals should do then? Kill themselves, as far as I'm concerned. Because they, you know, they're, they're horrible, wicked people. They're just going to keep molesting and, and, you know, destroying people. So I don't have any advice for homosexuals except to put a bullet in your own head so that you don't molest my kids or anyone else's kids. Research suggests that America is broadly becoming more tolerant of homosexuality. Stephen argues his extreme homophobia is a response to this trend. The same research found that a whole third of the population still believed their society should not accept homosexuality. And LGBT people are still more likely to be victims of hate crimes than any other minority group. Hi. Come on in, you guys. Stephen exploits this polarized feeling within his own congregation. I was invited to have lunch with Jenny and Juan. They disowned Juan's gay brother after listening to one of Stephen's sermons. At the time we were still speaking with um, Juan's brother, who is, uh, you know, a He's reprobate a queer. also. He's a queer. Um, and so when that, when he came out with that sermon, it was, you know, definitely hard hitting. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! That was it for me. I was like, all right, that's enough. You know, I don't even have to question it, pretty much. And from there on, we just never talked to my brother again. And I mean, I, and I think it was hard for my family to kind of see that. The world, that seems like a pretty harsh position. It's your own brother, it's your own flesh and blood. You grew up together. Honestly, when you have the Holy Spirit in you and you're saved, it just doesn't matter what the world thinks because they're going to hate you no matter what. He's not the brother that I knew at all. He's not. He's not that same, you know, young kid that I grew up with. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, it, would it be any different if he went out and killed someone? Should I think differently and just be like, oh, just because he's my brother, you know, he shouldn't get sentenced. No, it's like he still killed someone. He still reprobate. God's laws are the same, you know, and it's just the way that it is, you know. So what do you think most people think about you and the way that you live now? My personal family, they, they think I'm in some kind of a cult, you know, and it's kind of like, uh, there's nothing cult. I mean, there's, there isn't a cult-like atmosphere anywhere near the church. You know what? Isn't it amazing how all the homos hate Christians? But they're not considered a hate group. Many of the growing number of evangelical Christians in the US disapprove of Stephen's preaching. Even though they hate Christianity. But he claims to have influenced thousands in America and around the world. According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection. His videos have nearly 30 million hits on YouTube. With power in the last 30 days, people in the UK spent 232 days and 21 hours watching my channel. <laughs> people in the United States in the last 30 days spent over eight years watching wow. the channel. So I've uploaded a ton of new content in French, including right here, the Sinful Nation of France sermon in French. Do people ever ask you why you picked on France in particular? I've picked on a lot of countries. So with things that happen in America, like terrorist attacks in America, does America deserve that as well? Absolutely, yeah. Even as we spit in God's face, even as we, you know, murder 3,000 unborn babies a day, even as we promote homosexuality and adultery and promiscuity all over the world, and then we just assume nothing bad's gonna happen? You know, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't jive with what the Bible teaches. You know, the Bible says that 
um, the, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So that's the United States. Stephen says his extreme views were formed by his upbringing in an independent Baptist church. But his wife, Susanna, wasn't religious at all until their marriage. When you were younger, did you think this was how your life would be? No. No, I didn't. <laughs> no. I first met her and her eight children when she was pregnant with baby number nine. She homeschools all her kids. Do you see Stephen as your boss? It depends on what area. I mean, yes. The short answer is yes. But we're not going to. Stephen has convinced her that women should stay at home and shouldn't vote or run for president like Hillary Clinton. What do you think about a woman potentially being in the White House? I think it's awful. I think it's awful on many levels. And not because women are worthless or because they don't make good decisions. It's just not their realm of expertise. Not that Hillary is just the most feminine woman out there. So probably doesn't even affect her that much. But you know, the Bible says it's a curse to have women and children rule over you. You sick, homophobic son of a bitch. Talking about God striking down, he should strike down on your church and burn it to a crisp. For Pastor Stephen Anderson, abusive messages come with the territory. You call yourself a preacher, calling homosexuals pedophiles. Pedophiles probably you, you sick freak. How many voicemails do you get? Or hate mail. Well, it know. depends because it, you know, there will be days where I get hundreds, and then other days I might just get a handful. There's a steady trickle of hate, of hate mail and and hateful voicemails, but then whenever something is in the media or on TV or something, then there will just be a flood of a few hundred in one day. Mm -hmm. So, I can just play, I can just play you voicemails just from one day. Oh, yeah, this 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 one was a classic. This was the AR the AR fifteen. I'm coming to get you. What would you say back to us, Stephen? Well, enjoy AIDS, I guess, right? I can't even count how many people have threatened to come and kick my whatever and beat me up and rape me and violently rape my children. I mean, we got an email recently where they went into great detail how they're going to violently rape each child. They'd name the child and then say exactly what they're going to do to that child. I mean, just disgusting, vile things. Most people, if they were listening to messages like that, mm -hmm. where they're threatening to come and hurt their children, it would, it would make them think twice about what they were saying. Yeah, but I've been doing this for 11 years and nobody's ever come. But could you live with yourself if something did happen? Well, I, I wouldn't blame myself for what some other violent predator did. You know, I'm preaching the Bible. I'm doing what's right. If some violent predator came and did something to me or my family, that wouldn't be my fault. I'm willing to lose everything. I'm willing to give up everything. I will never stop. I don't care what the cost is. I will never stop preaching the Bible. You guys can come in and say hi to Hannah, but you can't screech. The next time I saw Stephen's wife, Susanna, she had baby number nine. You think you're going to have another baby? Another kid? I think so. I'm only 37. We don't do anything to stop it. So hopefully I've got a few more years in me, right? Hi, Cooper! I wondered if Stephen's children knew about the threats their dad received. Do you 
guys ever get scared that something might happen? You know, all these things that... Well, the Bible says no? that we have an army of angels surrounding us and protecting us, so I'm not scared. Why did yeah. I get to all death rights, but I don't really care. What about you, Miriam? Um, well, sometimes I do, but not usually. Usually I just think... Hanging out with Stephen, it became clear that not all of his beliefs are from the Bible. He's part of a small minority of Americans who believe the Nazi atrocities against Jews during World War II have been exaggerated. He also has controversial beliefs about who was behind the 9-11 terrorist attacks. I don't even believe the official version on 9-11. You know, I, I believe that 9-11 was actually carried out by our own government. But why would the American government kill thousands of its own people? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it, it's, so, it's so silly that you'd even have to ask that question because the whole point of 9-11 is that it's the justification for the police state. It's the justification for tripling the size of the FBI spending and the NSA. It's the justification for invading two countries. But think of what they've got to lose. If, if it came out that 9-11 uh -huh. was, you know, done by the government, I mean, that would bring down America. And also, the lie is so huge, there must have been so many people involved with it. How could it possibly still be a secret? It's not a secret. Everybody knows about it. If you go to New York and uh, do a poll on how many people believe the official version on 9-11, you'll find that there are huge segments of the population that say they don't believe it. Verity Baptist Church, Sacramento, California. I followed Pastor Stephen Anderson to a so-called Red Hot Preaching Conference. Ten minutes to freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from you, Hannah, and your camera. No, I'm just kidding. Pastor Anderson. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. All right. Stephen went in through the back door. <laughs> At the front, protesters against the conference started to arrive. Many were from the LGBT community. Another, Bishroy, was a devout Christian. I'm here today to change the hearts of a lot of these kids within the church that are stuck, um, and even the hearts of those adults that are stuck there um, that just are blinded by the pastor. Um, and I also do hope to change uh, the minds of a lot of the protesters and people looking at this from the outside uh, that think that this is Christianity because it's not. Christianity is truly a, a loving religion and it's meant to love everybody regardless of who and what they are. The point of Christianity is to love. Inside, crowds gathered for the star attraction. Stephen Anderson. Hey, what's up? And he was being treated like a celebrity. Hey, what's up, man? You got married? Yeah. The event attracted journalists. Gotta get live streaming for Facebook. Stephen prepared to aim his fire at them. And you know what? These people from the media here, I mean, unless they turn over a new leaf and start telling the truth, which probably isn't very likely, but these bozos from the media over here, they're gonna show all the love wins and love conquers hate. They won't show you how God-fearing family, men and women walk in this church and women are called a slut and a whore and they've never even seen these women in their life because they just rail and hate and spew out all their filth and they're disgusting. But you won't show that on the media, will you? No, you'll show all the little pretty little sodomites and they all love each other. By the way, I mean, I didn't choose that, hey, in the end times, before the second coming of Christ, we're going to have to be ripping face about a bunch of perverts and homos, and that's going to be the big issue in America that everybody talks about every single day in America. I didn't choose this fight. This fight has come to us, and you know what I say? Bring it on! Hey, look, whatever fight the devil wants to bring me, bring it on. Yeah. 
after the service, I caught up with Stephen outside. He seemed pleased with himself. Yeah, everything's good. You know? Just got a nice gift, so. You know? I mean, who doesn't want to get an AR-15 as a gift? I mean, that's a cool gift, right? Seriously, was it an AR-15? Yeah, I just got an AR-15 as a gift, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Fresh from receiving his new assault rifle, Stephen spotted the few remaining protesters. Did you go? Did you go say hi to your buddies over here yet, or no? Or you just ignore them, or what? Those guys? We call the people. one guy Aunt Jemima, the one with the hair. Well, Al, yeah. Al coined the term. This was the first time I'd seen Stephen confront his detractors face to face. What's up, guys? Oh, there we go, Mr. Anderson. There yeah. we go. In the flesh. There we go, in the flesh. Pastor Amazing. Anderson, here Amazing, I am. Amazing, sir. So are you guys, are any of you guys homos or just sympathizers? No, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Oh, That's okay. the difference. For the Lord or are you for the devil? I'm for the Lord. You're for the yeah. Lord. You think you're for the Lord. No, I know I'm no, for you're, the Lord. You, and you the Lord think you're hates, for the Lord, right? The, the Lord, Lord hates, hates all workers of iniquity. Oh. Read the, open the Bible. Oh. Congratulations. Psalm 5, 5, 5 Psalm 11. All of you guys pop out because no. you just say, I'm saved. I believe. So whatever you do, when you beat your wife, when you beat your kids, when you do what you want in sin, it's okay because you're already saved. That's why you're just a cop out. You know what? It's a sin not to beat your kids. It's a sin not to beat your, your kids. kids. The Bible it's, says, "Thou did, shalt did, did be." Did Jesus Christ beat a kid? Thou did shalt Jesus, be. Did Jesus Christ he didn't beat have a kid? Kids. He, no. Uh, did, the Bible kid, says, he beat a kid "Thou the shalt did he beat a man right here." Woman. I'm done yeah. listening to man. Yeah. Right here. It's okay. It's okay. You have a bunch of half wits, half wits laughing with you, saying, "All right, see you later, man bun." Don't know your Bible, 3311, read it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You guys are in What's denial, that? you're just trying to have a cop out. Trust me, you're far yeah, from safe. You're far from safe. <laughs> yeah, I went and fraternized with him. Yeah, you missed it.